We're continuing our discussions with Dr. Newell Bringhurst. We've talked about the controversial topics of blacks in the priesthood as well as Son Brody, and we're going to continue to talk about controversial subjects with Dr. Bringhurst. We'll actually ask him in this episode how he deals with controversial topics such as polygamy. He's actually written a few books on polygamy, and we'll be talking about those in more detail. I hope you check that out. It looks like March is going to be polygamy month. I'm really excited because following Dr. Newell Bringhurst's uh, conversation, we'll continue to talk about polygamy with uh, Dr. William Smith. Uh, Greg Colford Books was kind enough to send me a copy of this. We've also got our latest transcript with Russell Stevenson on Elijah Abel, so I hope you check that out. Also, Newell Bringhurst has a new book coming out. It's going to be released uh, in April, April 10th, I believe. This is the very old uh, book from the 1980s. He's producing a second edition. This was a fantastic book, and I encourage you to buy his second edition. That's going to be coming right out. Now back to our conversation. Apparently you enjoy controversy. You talk about blacks in the priesthood, and then you talk about polygamy. Uh, what are your latest polygamy books that you put Well, I, I've, uh, I've been involved with uh, Craig Foster, a, a, a co-author, co co-editor. Uh, the, the two of us together uh, did a series of volumes. Uh, they're, they're, they're anthologies, collections of essays uh, uh, by various contributors. It's uh, kind of a trilogy. We... Volume one is The Persistence of Polygamy, Joseph Smith and the Origins of Polygamy's Volume One. And that was initially published in 2009, and we focus on, on the controversial aspects of, of, of Joseph Smith and his uh, involvement and practice of polygamy. Uh, there's, there's three essays in, in that volume dealing with D&C 132, which is the foundation scripture for uh, uh, for polygamy, and uh, uh, Craig Foster did one of those essays, and I did I did two of them. Uh, I did I did one that deals with uh, how 132 was uh, evolved and used by you know the the how it uh, analyzing the text and 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 so on and how it's been interpreted and and uh, utilized uh, from its from when it was issued. Uh, you know, down to the present, how that sort of served as a foundational document. And then uh, I did a, a second essay in that volume is how the RLDS, or now the Community of Christ, have responded to uh, the uh, uh, DNC 132. Of course, they don't accept it as part of their canon. And then uh, Craig Foster also did one. And so we, we kind of revisited 132. And, and, and I, you know, because nobody's really sat down and really thoroughly examined the uh, nuances and the way that 132 has been used. I, I talked to a lot of Latter Day Saints, and uh, you know, say, well, how is 132 taught in your gospel taught in your doctrine classes? And they sort of give me a blank stare. Or they give me a truncated version, and I, I felt it really deserved because it's one of the most complex, and it not only deals with, you know, and looking at it carefully. It not only deals with, you know, sanctioning the practice of polygamy, but it deals with the issues of, of exaltation and, and uh, you know, touches on eternal progression, the, the uh, procreation, the family and the hereafter. And, and so it, it deals with a lot of foundational aspects of, uh, of uh, you know, of, of, of Mormon, uh, as, as how Mormon doctrine had evolved by the time that Joseph Smith, uh, uh, brought it forth in in, in uh, 1843, you know it it uh, because you know polygamy had been practiced before that time, you know of course, but I I felt it was one of those neglected aspects of uh, of looking at the larger issue. I mean I was surprised in looking at some of the you know earlier works on polygamy, what scant attention 132 and you know and I I, I guess being you know, I, I, I feel that Mormon scripture was so much an important part of, uh, of uh, why Latter-day Saints believe the way they do. And, and uh, they believe that, it, you know, it's the word of God through Joseph Smith. And so I tried to give thorough, serious consideration. And I, I, I feel that I, those chapters, I feel, are the, my greatest contribution, besides the fact 
of editing the volume, but uh, uh, Don Bradley did an essay on Fanny Alger, arguing that uh, Joseph's marriage to uh, Fanny Alger was a actually a marriage and not a not an affair, not a nasty little affair, as all, as Oliver Cowdery said. Well, I tend to take issue with him. I, I I allowed him to make his case, and I, you know, and he gave he gave a good argument for his position, and so I. You know, I, I felt like it, it should be out there for people to uh, consider it. I've always considered myself to be fair-minded when I look at controversial issues. I want to make sure that people are aware of all sides of, of, of an issue. And, uh, and, and that was one of those. And another one, of course, was the idea of underage marriage, the marriage of Joseph Smith to teenagers, which was a very, another extremely controversial topic. And, uh, and Craig Foster, my, my co-editor of that volume, looked at, uh, he felt that it wasn't out of the norm for people at that time to marry w w women or teenagers of that age, whereas Todd Compton, who did the definitive work on Joseph Smith and, and, and polygamy you know, and sacred loneliness, he sort of arrived at an opposite conclusion. So it was kind of a little bit of a point counterpoint, those two articles. Uh, paired together, just like uh, Craig Foster and I sort of looked at uh, 132 from differing perspectives. He he saw it as uh, as more related to the foundation of family, and I, I I saw there was more other other issues that were involved, and uh, and then the other big issue with Joseph Smith, of course, was polyandry. And uh, that was the essay that Brian Hales wrote. Again, I tended to disagree with some of his, uh, his uh, conclusions. Specifically, it was the idea, did he have sex with those women? You know, to, to paraphrase Bill Clinton, did he indeed have sex with those, uh, with those men, those women that were married to other men at the time they were married to those other women, which is a very critical, controversial issue. And, you know, Brian Hales being, you know, uh, an apologist and, and uh, uh, tended to discount that they actually consummated them in, in sexual relations and uh, tried to present a, a set of arguments that he felt proved his case. I, I mean, it's interesting that uh, Brian Hales' basic arguments on, on the whole issue of polygamy have a very legalistic uh, uh, approach to them. And I, and I've always kidded Brian Hales. I said to him, maybe that's the fact that your father's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we're good friends. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Brian Hales, I, I mean, I think that's one of the healthy things about the field of, of Mormon studies, that you can disagree and not be disagreeable and, and still remain friends and, and, and uh, enjoy camaraderie with people that you disagree with. I think that's one of the great things about the whole field of Mormon studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> by the way, I interviewed Brian a few months ago, so we'll, we'll play you guys back to back. We disagree on a number of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Noel Bringhurst. In our next conversation, we'll talk about Richard Bushman's book, Rough Stone Rolling, and his treatment of polygamy. Dr. Bringhurst gives his perspective on this. One of the weaknesses, glaring weaknesses, I saw in uh, Richard Bushman's uh, rough stone rolling was he kind of slighted Joseph Smith's involvement with polygamy. I found that one of the most disappointing parts of his uh, rough stone rolling. He kind of slights, he, does, he doesn't even really acknowledge the wives that Joseph married. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you like our page on facebook.com slash gospel tangents. You can subscribe at YouTube at youtube.com slash gospel tangents. We're also on Twitter at gospel tangents, as well as make sure that you subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss any of our episodes. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our videos. Thanks again.